This is my hottest take of all of CitizenCon. I put it on my video about this, but if you haven't watched it, I will let Chris describe to you what I think might be the big reveal that they talk about here. So skills, it's not just Squadron 42, it will be Star Citizen as well. So we've split them up into kind of two um, areas. One is physical attributes. So we have four physical attributes such as strength, uh, agility, endurance and fitness. And then we have uh, techniques, which is kind of like uh, whether it's takedowns or traversal. So if you look at the physical attributes, what we have, essentially we're going to have a skill system that you can go and the way that you play the game will dictate how you level up these particular skills. So if you're constantly carrying boxes, you know, you may get stronger so you can actually lift stronger things. But getting stronger doesn't just allow you to lift up your boxes, but it also means that your equip load that you can carry in your inventory is, is higher. That, that weight doesn't affect you as much. So you're not, you're, you, can, you can sprint further because it's not affecting your stamina as much. You know, your force reactions, you're more resistant to that because you're stronger in yourself. Agility in terms of like weapon swapping or um, going to ADS. Uh, we have endurance, so that's, for example, like how resistant you are to the environment. If you look at, say, Navy SEAL training or SES training in, in Britain, essentially, you know, they have cold weather training. Uh, they have, you know, you, you can in, survive in harsher climates. You can go longer without uh, sustenance. Uh, and th then that's what essentially endurance gives you. And, and also, for example, like G-force and red out so that, you, you know, pilots train for that so they can actually modulate their breathing so they're actually able to sustain higher G's than a normal person would be. And then you have fitness. So fitness, for example, you can have a higher stamina. So when we have swimming, you can swim longer, you can, you can hold your breath longer, you can sprint longer. So we have these physical attributes and we have multiple different ways for how you um, improve them. And those physical attributes will, will denote how effective you are at certain things in the game. So, and that will come to obviously for flying as well as um, um, in FPS. But we're not going to be removing any of the skill elements. So there's nothing that we're going in there going, oh, you've got 10% more damage. Or, you know, we're going to make you... I don't know, man. This is a... Um, this is going to be very divisive. This is going to be very divisive. This is going to be, I think, a bigger talking point than the cargo stuff than the engineering stuff at least for people who've been following the game for a while i think this is really going to split opinions and we will have to see just how far into this they go how much they they bring this into the game from what it sounds like it's going to be kind of like how grand theft auto does their stuff um how you know the more you do something the more it levels up as opposed to like going and, and getting skill points or working on experience and then applying that to a certain skill, it's it's kind of more of a natural progression. But even then, this is going to be divisive, I think. Fly the plane better. It's like, no, that, that's always relying on your skill. This is the things that you, you can't necessarily improve. So, you know, like I said, how, far, how fast you can sprint or how far you can sprint. All, all of those different things that are tied into your physical attributes. Well, it's like real life, right? Absolutely. I mean, like you've got to spend some time. If you want to increase your strength, you, I mean, yes, you could naturally be born strong, but if you go to the gym and you start lifting weights, yep. you know, you, okay, I can do whatever. I can, like, bench press 100 pounds. Now I can do 120. Now I can do 140. Now I can do 160. Now I can do 180, right? Well, you couldn't do 180 right from the beginning. You yeah. had to... You had to work the same if you're like don't running, make fun of me chris right? i could never do you're those things and so that's kind of the idea is there are things that you do during the gameplay that uh you know your gameplay can add to you but if you want to take some time and go to the gym and do some squats you you know you, you can get some yeah. strength up and uh I, I again that's part of like making that that the 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 living world so if you want to invest in your character that way in a sort of more realistic way the way the world wills because like rich says we still want all the skill in terms of being able to you know aim and shoot and do all the rest of the stuff um then you can do that if that's something that makes sense for what your character is going to be i mean in you know squadrons one thing but in the pu you know yeah i'm a i'm a cargo hauler i probably don't really need to be all buff and everything because exactly. i'm sitting there in the cab of my caterpillar hauling a bunch of cargo 
but if I want to be a bounty hunter, maybe I want to invest some time. So if I'm in a foot race trying to put, take someone down, I can outrun them, you know? Yeah, because if you're wearing the same, if you're wearing heavy armor and they're wearing heavy armor, and, and you've put effort into, you know, skilling up your character because you're, you know, you, that's the dedicated area of focus that you want, you know, you can run further than them. You can carry, a, carry things, you know, that are heavier than, than uh, they can. You can equip things onto you and it doesn't affect you as much. So all of those different physical attributes, it allows you to progress your character in those ways. And then we have the technique side of things. So we're going to have multiple different techniques for lots of different skills across the star system. But a, a good one to uh, a good one to how to explain it is it's almost like the ten thousand hours. You know, if you do ten thousand hours, kind of thing, you're better at something. So takedowns is a good example. So the first time you do a takedown, you know, that's going to be quite sloppy. It's it's going to take quite a long time. You know, you might struggle, and uh, okay, eventually you you take them down, and it's like, oh, okay, the guy over there heard me. It's not very good. And after a certain amount of time, that you, you know, you practice at them. Yeah, more takedowns you do, the better you you'll get. get better. So then they'll change different animations. So then now you'll unlock a different animation where it's it's smoother. Steve it's, Bender is yeah, very it's... looking forward to doing <laughs> exactly. all the versions of takedowns. Yeah. Literally. At CitizenCon last year, Steve Bender was the one who presented the assassination. <laughs> I never caught that he mentioned that. That's so funny. Floppy to super killer pro. Yeah, and at the end ones, it'd be like, you know, straight in, straight out. You lower him down onto the floor. It takes, you know, it's much faster. But you've put in the effort to level that skill to a level that you want to achieve. And I think that's what skills is about. It's about giving players goals that they want I mean, to do. We'll have the same for like, uh, you know, uh, melee, like fist fighting, melee combat, or yeah. knife fighting. Um, longer term, we want to sort of, this is more PU, not squadron, but introduce, say, more moves you could do in fights, say martial arts, or whatever, you yep. have to go somewhere. Or traversal as well. Brother, and what? Learn them from someone and then do it a bit more and then you would get better. Mm -hmm. So these are all things you could gain. And that's kind of the- You're gonna learn your Xion special skills in martial arts. That's a lot, man. Like you said, the you know the idea of sort of you know the skills and techniques yeah. uh, that we want to introduce because uh, again it's you know this is going to be a really huge deep world and it's sort of up to you how you want to but I mean, essentially build your character. If you look at fighter pilots now. Okay, so this was actually shown at CitizenCon last year to an extent. So this is where we're going to add some player player skill progression. So kind of move you through different action sets. You're going to start off by struggling. You might fail. Of course, this will this sort of added time and the extra noise you're making is really going to increase the increase the risk of detection. You're going to get faster the more you do it. And then you're going to reach maximum efficiency. Check this one out. So he's so fast you can barely see him do it. And then he guides the body to the floor. So he makes almost no noise, right? Um we're going to explore some more variation beyond our unarmed and our knife takedowns. Like so sedative. they are very ready to present this, I think. And this is probably something that they first developed for Squadron. And it's basically ready to go with Squadron as that game is much further along than the PU. Um, but yeah, I think this is something that will add emphasis to Death of a Spaceman. That'll make people care more about their characters and not losing that character by dying. Um, it'll add some progression for a lot of people who generally are looking less at a sandbox and more of a player-focused game. And it'll likely be something they also talk about in the 1.0 talk. But yeah, this is going to be divisive. I don't know how this is going to be taken. I think really they need to be careful about how they market and, and sort of explain this. And words like skills and leveling up and stuff like that seems to rub people the wrong way. But yeah, I think this is one of the biggest parts of this first panel, or not first panel, but the third gameplay panel that they are talking about here with Dress to Kill. And that's that.